If this were a normal year, we would be getting ready to celebrate our Eucharistic Congress in Uptown Charlotte this coming weekend. But because of the coronavirus, that has changed this year. And so this year, each parish instead will be celebrating in some way a Eucharistic-themed weekend. And so also here at the parish of St. Patrick, we have special events that are planned along those lines for next weekend. The Eucharistic Congress is a beautiful event for our diocese because it brings the whole diocese together as one family in Christ. And in that way, though we are separated in many different parishes and missions, 92 parishes and missions, when we come together for that Eucharistic Congress, we're celebrating our unity in Christ. And it's just as St. Paul says, we who, are many one, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread, the bread of life. So from many, we see there in a beautiful way how it's manifest at the Eucharistic Congress. We are one body. Some thousands and thousands of people come together. Really, it's our baptism in Christ which already unites us as brothers and sisters and makes us one body in Christ as a spiritual family in the church. And the Holy Eucharist then, when we receive as baptized Christians, it serves to make our union with Jesus and make our union with our brothers and sisters even stronger. It's strengthening that bond that we have, which begins at baptism with each other. The Eucharist makes, deepens it and renews it and makes it even stronger. And of course, it makes sense that the Eucharist would strengthen our bond with Jesus because the Eucharist is Jesus. And it makes sense that the Eucharist would strengthen our bond with one another as we all receive the one sacred host because the Good Shepherd is really present in the Eucharist. Jesus is really present and he's bringing his flock together around himself. A beautiful event which we celebrate. And I know that you already know this, but it's good just to, just to be reminded on special occasions like this that after the consecration of the Mass, bread and wine cease to exist. There is no more bread and wine after the consecration at the Mass because from the moment of the consecration, uh, the body and blood of Jesus are truly present before us for our adoration. So the entire substance of the bread is changed into the body of Christ, and the entire substance of the wine is changed into the blood of Christ. So there's an objective reality beyond which we can see that is really present, and that is the real presence of Christ, substantially present. And as um, Pope Paul VI reminded us in a beautiful statement he made in 1968, his credo on the people of God, he says, what exists there in the Eucharist is independent of what you think about it. Jesus is really and substantially and truly present. And it doesn't depend on what we think about it, but it's of course Jesus' will that makes it such. So we receive, of course, a reality of Christ's real presence, which the apostles received at the Last Supper. When Jesus said to the apostles, this is my body, and this is the chalice of my blood, which is shed, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And so that we receive the same, he said to the apostles, do this in memory of me. Make sure that this continues in the church. Do this in memory of me. That's the basis, going back to Jesus himself, of course, of what he said. He decreed took place at the Last Supper and what he wanted us also to receive, his real presence, the sacrament of his body and blood. 
So the Eucharistic Congress will be celebrated this year in some way in every parish church in the Diocese of Charlotte in 92 locations, but still it'd be the Eucharist which is uniting us even across the miles, in uniting us as one body in Christ. I remember as I was growing up, one pastor before he was transferred and sent to another parish and the people were sad that he was leaving, reminded the parishioners in his homily, you know, no matter where I go, if we all stay united to the Eucharist, we're always united to one another. And that's the unity in the one body of Christ which the Holy Eucharist effects in the church, the Good Shepherd uniting his flock across the miles to each other and to him. So the blessings of the Congress that will be celebrated throughout the diocese, first of all, will be celebrating our faith in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Secondly, by celebrating the Eucharistic Congress and giving attention to this beautiful gift Jesus has given, we'll be increasing our respect and our reverence and our devotion to the Holy Eucharist. Thirdly, by celebrating our Eucharistic Congress throughout in all the dioceses, we're going to keep, keep alive our desire, our holy desire, and our resolve to live holy lives ourselves so that we worthily receive the body of Christ in communion. And another reason we're celebrating with this special emphasis on the Eucharist is to remind us to be more intimately and closely united to Christ by receiving him in Holy Communion. Because he said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. So if he's living in, in us through Holy Communion, that is an intimate, very close communion that we enjoy with Jesus. May our Eucharistic Congress this year, celebrated in many, many parish locations throughout the diocese, help all of us to grow closer to Christ. And hopefully we'll have a, a vaccination of the coronavirus ready for us so that by this time next year, we'll all be able to be together in one place at the Charlotte Convention Center for the, diocese, uh, for the Congress. So I look forward really to hearing the reports of what the parishes have done next weekend to celebrate this beautiful gift, this great gift that Jesus gave to his church, the sacrament of his body and blood. Today's gospel, Jesus assures us of his presence with us. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And certainly through his Holy Spirit, Jesus is always present with us wherever we gather wherever Christians, Baptist Christians, gather together. But especially through his real presence in the Holy Eucharist, the risen Lord remains with us, where two or three gather in my name, as we do for Mass. There I am in the midst of them.